let's talk about some funky ammonite structures. So this is what most people think of when you say ammonite. Also, ignore the fact that I don't have a bed sheet on. I spilled ice cream on it last night. So this is what most people think of when you think ammonite, kind of just like a regular snail. These are some fossils that I have. It's just quite snail shaped and quite a common shape for an ammonite. So they're quite similar in structure to today's modern nautilus species, mostly just being a spiral starting in the center where the tentacles and everything protrude out the front. That is what most people think of. That is also the most common, but we can get into some weird ones. So we have the Mariella. Now this one is kind of the classic spiral shape, but instead of just going out from the center, it kind of goes upwards. So it still grows outward, just instead of starting at the center going out, it kind of starts at the center top and grows out and down, getting bigger with size as the ammonite gets bigger in size. This is kind of a variation on the normal one, but again, not out of the realm of, okay, yeah, I can see it, especially since there's quite a lot of modern shells that look vaguely similar. Then we get into some slightly weirder ones, and excuse any of my pronunciation, the scalarites. Now, it is in the classic spiral shape as well, However, there's quite a lot of space in between. Instead of it being one solid condensed spiral, it's very much more spread out. Now, it would seem that, at least to me, this would be a little bit of a detrimental because it seems like those end bits would break off fairly easily and be fairly fragile and also not very efficient to move with, but that's, I mean, that's just kind of how these guys did it. And then we have something similar with the Eubostricoceras, I think. Um, again, it's very much like the last two. It starts at the top and spirals downwards, like the Mariella, but it also is very much more spaced apart, like the last one that I'm not going to try to pronounce again. And again, to me, it seems like this would be a little bit detrimental, because I would imagine that those end bits would break off fairly easily, but I'm not an ammonite, so I can't really judge. And then we have my personal favorite, the Anisoceras, which is very, very spiky and also quite chunky. We have all of these spikes protruding from them, which I would imagine is not a pleasant experience for predators. Now, as with the modern Nautilus, all of these ammonites grow in the same way. They start very small at the tip, and as they grow, they add chambers. So the actual Nautilus body is not in the entire shell, and neither is the ammonite. It's only contained within the first chamber in the shell, and the rest are basically just empty, and it's used for things like buoyancy to help them go up and down in the water column. So most of this elaborate nautilus shell is just empty space. There's not really a lot of animal there. And now we have some weirder ones, very much weirder ones. This is Diplomoceras, and it got very elaborate. It's a pretty trombone flavored shell, if I do say so. It just goes up and curls around. It's not quite a spiral. It reminds me very much of a trombone or perhaps a paperclip. So ammonites were cephalopods, which are the same group as modern nautilus, squid, octopus, etc. And they're within the larger group mollusks. And so all, unless secondarily lost, Mollusks have shell, and it's all made kind of in the same stuff, a lot of calcium carbonate. So it's excreted by the mantle, and it hardens, and it grows, and it does all of that. So it eventually forms this very elaborate shell structure. And finally, last but not least of the ones I'm going to talk about, we have the Nipponites. And that is what they looked like. It kind of seems like they just gave up, and instead of having any semblance of a spiral, it just kind of goes wherever into a elaborate knot instead of a neat spiral or even a paperclip. I, good for them not sticking to the societal norms of the time.